All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 135 or something of the Speared Sundays podcast. It's a very special episode here. So special we had to delay it a day just because we worked out we could do this one on Monday. I'm joined by uh, Greeley, who supported me throughout all tour, and uh, Spider Lad, who robs meth dealers. <laughs> so welcome to the show guys It's good to be back And it's good to be filmed This is the first um, Spearhead podcast that I've done on camera bro I know I, I, I realised that I had a look through Because I wanted to get some like video clips up And there's, there's only audio yeah. So people don't know what you look like So this is Grills And this is Spider Lab We put a nice spider over his head So can't really see him, <laughs> but he, he is real. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah! What a tour, man. Yeah, like and yeah, this is like the just the tour recap vlog, I suppose. You know, yeah. it's all it's all finally done, which is which is great and sad. Yeah, it's sad. It's <laughs> but it's beautiful. It was a beautiful tour, man. Like mm. I was thinking on the way here, I've got I can remember a lot of the funny shit from nearly every stop. So yeah, we can recap it all if you want, like. But, um, man, yeah, from start to finish, it really grew into its own thing. Yeah. Like, I feel when we started in Geelong, you know, still very happy with the show, but by the time that we hit the Comics Lounge, it was... Um, it was a different beast. Like, the yeah. show always gets better, but I feel like this show changed the most out of the yeah. other tours that I've done, just because I felt I've, I really put effort into making it better each time, and, like... Yeah. Um, I've, I've talked about it on the podcast before. I, I started to a looking at my notes and looking at my show and going, "Oh, this is a bad show." Yeah. <laughs> and I've yeah. never thought that, but it was it was as soon as I did it for the first time, I was like, "Oh no, this is this is probably the best show. It's just the hardest, most difficult, most fucked up show I've ever written." Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, you went, you took your um, the, the levels you were pushing your material to a new high. And I'd mm. say it's probably one of the hardest. Um, shows to pull off material wise, I guess. I mean, for the I mean, how much can we go into like what you did for your comedy show with the podcast? Because I don't want to ruin any bits or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can talk about. I guess we can talk about the subjects that I covered. I just don't want it to ruin the actual yeah. jokes. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, for the subjects that you're pushing, like I mean, compared to death threats don't scare me. I feel in death threats don't scare me. You're like you pushed about three. Mm you know edgy things whereas this one you went five or six or anything you went for all of them you know what I mean yeah. you just anything that was ready to be aimed at from the last like year of our current climate of the world you kind of went out yeah yeah I guess yeah I, I, I'd agree with that like I was going at like feminism and, and like pedophilia rape and no, it wasn't a rape joke no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was a time traveling joke, <laughs> which I won't ruin because at some point that'll probably find its way into a comedy special. But if you missed out, hey man, that's your loss. Um, but yeah, it was. It's been a fucking amazing tour. Um, yeah, and the same here. Like for me, my you know my experience from the start of the tour was completely compared to the end. And I think by the time we hit Perth, after I did Adelaide, because Adelaide was the first big venue that we mm. did. I really wanted to like push my game up and yeah. I saw how hard you were working at, you know, getting better every time and I was like, well fuck, I've got to match your energy and your effort of how much we're putting into it. Mm. And so yeah, that once I hit Perth, I, I feel like I I think <clears> so, yeah. I leveled up. I was so exhausted when we got to Perth. I didn't sleep fuck all in Adelaide. I've been staying with friends everywhere across the country. I was talking about the podcast. I have never toured with someone and like just never like not seen them. <laughs> like we want to. I reckon for the first two or three weeks of the tour, I only saw you at the shows. Yeah. And we was we had the same accommodation, the same flights, and you were just as soon as we landed, you were like, "Oh, I'm going to hang out with these seven people." And I'm like, "Fucking all right." <laughs> And then it, it was like, if I thought about it anymore, it'd fucking stress me out heaps. But I'm like, whatever, Greeley will make it to the venue. That's all that really matters. Yeah, I'm reliable. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and and you made it. I don't know how you fucking talk to that many people. I couldn't handle it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I definitely want... I, I love networking with people anyway, but mm. I felt like, as well, because I've travelled around the country and I've networked with so many people, I wanted to help promote it your show as well if you know what I mean yeah and because it's, it's, it's hard with my fan base because my fan base is caught in the hip hop loop 
Yeah. And the hip hop loop is going like this, and then the comedy one's going like this. Yeah, the other way, yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, even though there's more comedy shows on more week nights, and it's a bit different, but it's just hard to get them from different tracks onto mm. the other one. So I think that's, you know, you've done su me such a favour and taking me on tour and promoting me to your fans. I really wanted to make the most of my travels to go out and catch up with mates and go, I'm here with Lewis Spears, this is what he's doing, come get amongst it. And yeah. even if they didn't make it, show them what you're about and have the put it in their memory that I'm in town with Lewis. So yeah. even if they don't pick up on you then, that name will, you know, when they see it in JB Hi-Fi, they'll ask the guy, Grills was, hey, you know, or yeah. whatever. Like, And so that was definitely an aspect of why I did want to catch up with everyone and make the most of it, you know, mm. as well as just catching up with friends. I have way too many friends. <laughs> you do, bro. <laughs> I do. It's hard. I felt like it was points on tour because I, I reckon I've caught up with at least about 60 good friends. In the you last... don't, you can't have 60 good friends. Somehow I can. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but there is a point, like, cause, I mean, humans. Can... I reckon I've got three. You know, three. Well, that's yeah. 60 good stories. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. That's why whenever I hang out with Grilly, I hear about fucking 100 stories I've never heard before that are all amazing. He's like, oh, I haven't <laughs> told you about this. I'm like, yeah. nah, man. It's because, oh, it's because I have 120 good friends. <laughs> yeah, and I sign up to whatever they're doing for the day when I get there. I'm like, hey, I'm here. Sign up. Let's go. You, you know what I mean? You fucking do. And, Game time. And, um, <laughs> and I, I've always lived like that. And I think it's cool as well. Like, you know, when I was getting into stand up, I was watching heaps of podcasts about comedians and touring with their friends. And, and one guy that I really like related with and identified with is Joey Diaz. Yeah. And the way that he has so many outrageous stories and he's found an amazing platform to start telling them, you know. And well, I yeah, feel he comes from like a full on jail criminal background of like yeah. robbing people, bashing people, selling drugs and he Welcome comes from to like my a, world. <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's basically American mm. Spider Lad, but he's doing comedy. Yeah. <laughs> the New York Spider Lad. But um yeah, and then and it's funny that we're having this conversation now because like, just then it like reminded me, I, th I can't remember who, but they were talking about touring with Joey and Joey does the same thing. He just disappears yeah. and they just kind of <laughs> go, ah, he'll be there and he rocks up on time. And so you yeah. know, I'm pretty proud that I can get to the airport, a drunk mate, 40 minutes away will pay for an Uber for me to go there. All of a sudden, I'm in a house in Fremantle with like 10 drunk cunts that have been partying for three days straight. And I'm like, all right, I've got to figure out how to get to the gig somehow. And I don't have a license and I'm always broke. So like, yeah, but it happens. And I was there. I was at every show. Yeah, on time to every show. And it does, even though our tour manager, Adam, is having a panic attack every night. Where's Grilly? Where's Grilly? I don't know. He'll probably... Be, I'm just saying, I don't know. He'll be here. If he's not, I don't know. He'll miss it out. Yeah. <laughs> but he'll be here. But I don't miss it out. <laughs> um, um, now, we have, uh, we have spider -Land. You haven't said a word, mate. Um, mm. <laughs> I wanted to talk about you getting arrested when when <laughs> when so, you so, ra rang the door should we recap the, the story yeah let's recap the story okay so from the news article from the news story that we saw which Grilly and I talked about in, in the last podcast that Grilly and I did uh, yeah. from what the news said about four or five people rocked up to a house rummaging around trying to rob it and then one idiot accidentally <laughs> rang the doorbell <laughs> which made the, the people wake up and then they, they called the cops and then the cops arrived and then you guys decided to fight the cops yeah. is that what happened well actually it was like there was a doorbell and it had a camera on it on the yeah. front like on the front fence so I had a hammer <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that I would use the hammer to take the thing that has a camera off the fence. Yeah. So I wedged it off the fence, like <laughs> jimmied it off the fence, and it, it sort of it popped off the fence. Mm -hmm. And then I hit the back of it because it had a plug on the back. So I hit the back, and I never rang the doorbell at su as such. <laughs> but I think, I think that it must have. It must have tripped it when when I hit it and so the wires broke. So you hit it and then it went ding dong, so ding he, dong. He hit the door. Oh, guess the what? Spider lads in the building. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, but you never so went then, in the house, did you? No, we never went in the house because once we finally got into the fence, like next to the, after I pried off the 
doorbell. I look to the, <laughs> I look to the left and I see a key box. I'm like, oh, I wonder if this idiot actually has his house keys Mm-mm. on the fence. Yeah. <laughs> so I pried that off as well and I smashed the back of it open. Mind you, this is at six twenty AM on a on a That's pretty main street and there's people What day? On a Thursday morning. <laughs> Why the fuck are you robbing houses at six twenty AM on Thursday? Well, That's before just... work, dude. And there was people riding past in Lycra. And... <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty chaotic. So I, I end up, I get into this key box, and the, ac- the key box actually didn't have a key to the house, but it had a beeper to open this dickhead's gate. Mm, yeah. So I open the gate, and we go in. And I think it was about... So hang on, you've, you're trying to rob a house, and you've rung the doorbell... But he's the dickhead. <laughs> 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 All right, guys, yeah. I'm a dickhead. <laughs> yeah, so and, you get and I, in. we get in, and two minutes later the cops come, and I'm like, I actually went there with only one bat, and I ended up at the front. I ended up with, oh, well, I had an extendable bat that was concealed, and then yeah. I ended up with a baseball bat, a hammer. On camera, because this guy had CCTV. <laughs> and I ended up with everything that I'd never went there with. So when the, when the cops rolled so the in the So the only thing fence, you managed to steal was weapons for the cops. Yeah. <laughs> when the cops came in, they're like, drop the weapons. And I'm just like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm standing there and I'm thinking, fuck, I'm fucked. I've got a bat and a hammer and... So were you with a group of people? Yeah, just... I was with a group of people. And right. like, they were just like... I think we were just a bit too messy. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they were like getting around the other sides of the house. And I was I only made it to the carport. I looked inside this guy's shed. I walked out of the shed. And the cops were there. So we sort of like said... Had a few words and told him to get fucked. And then... I was pepper sprayed and <laughs> arrested on the ground. We got there. We got there at six twenty-four, and I think it was six twenty-eight when we got arrested. <laughs> Guess what? Crown me now, criminal of the year. That's so funny. And that's when everyone, st- everyone decided that Spider Lads in jail. Let's start. Let's yeah. start the game again. And six months later, hide your meth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so because you, you never went in the house, you couldn't be done for a house invasion. Yeah, yeah. So, at, like, when I was in the interview room, they were trying to, like, the cops were trying with their scare tactics, trying to tell me that, oh, this holds a maximum penalty of 25 years. And, mm. and I'm like, for what? Trespassing? I said, do you think I've never been in a police station before? Mm. And they're like, <laughs> trying to, oh, but it's a maximum penalty. And I'm like, yeah, jam your maximum penalty. Yeah. Well, they always use the maximum penalty. Like, you always hear about it. In, like, the news does that all the time as yeah. well. Like, someone... Like, I read an article before about someone... They... They, uh... I feel like... It, I can't really remember what it was, but it was like some... They threw a rock at something, and then the news was like... It was like a famous person, and they were like, Oh, it's a maximum penalty of 10 years. Yeah. And then my friend goes, Dude, this guy could get 10 years. That'd ruin his career. I'm like, he's not going to get 10 years for throwing a rock at a yeah. car. They did the same thing with Astro when he had but Tony Abbott. They were saying like <coughs> after fifteen years for assaulting a an, a an officer of the Queen or whatever the fuck yeah. it is. And um, yeah, you got two months. <laughs> you know what I mean? No. Yeah, well, well, I ended up I ended up doing six months this time and Yeah, they were, but it, when they charge they gave they charged us for a home invasion mm-hmm. at the start just to hold us on remand and yeah, I was thinking, fuck, my lawyer's saying to me, fuck, if you go down for this, you're probably going to get five years. And I'm like, fuck, for trespassing? Mm, yeah. Heck, it's not possible to get five years for trespassing. Mm. And he goes, well, yeah. And then one of my dickhead coeys tried to tried to plead guilty to an attempted aggravated burg. And I'm like, I'm not playing up to that. So, yeah. like, it caused a big shift fight because we're all in the same yard and my coey's there and he's going to me, no, I didn't try and make a deal, but my lawyer and the judge are saying that one of the coeys has tried to make a deal. So I just translate the lad science here. Yeah. Coeys co-defendant. Yeah, right? co-offender, yeah. 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 Sorry, guys. No worries. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep translating. <laughs> so, yeah, so one of my co-offenders is lying to me, lying to our... Like, three of us end up getting pinched there. And, yeah. 
And you're one, all in jail together. Yeah, we're all in jail together. One, one stick and fat, like st- staying, like we're all just fighting it to the end because we didn't really do a home invasion. We're yeah. not going down for a home invasion. But then one dickhead thought, oh yeah, I'm going to try and make a deal for an attempted at Agberg and... Aggravated burglary. <laughs> <laughs> and it nearly fucked us up. But lucky, I'm out of here now, so it's happy it days. did it. Yeah. yeah. It's happy days now. I was fucking stoked because this, this fellow's one of my best mates and um, yeah, the last couple of years I haven't seen him that much and we caught up in Melbourne just before we caught up and did the original Spider Lad podcast. Yeah. And, um, <coughs> and that's when we caught up. And then you got, yeah, and then when I came back to Melbourne and you got locked up the few days before. Yeah. The day, the morning I was leaving to Melbourne, your mum sent me the link to that news article. <laughs> she didn't even tell me. She just sent me the link and I watched a news article. I'm like, oh, fuck. I fucking died when that woman said, because they rang the doorbell. I think I was in a heart attack, man. It was so fucking funny. But I w- also wanted to, to talk about the original spider lad story. Are you, are you happy to talk about yeah. it? I'm having trouble. What the fuck happened? <laughs> so, the, the, this is in the... Was this the first podcast that you and I did, Grills? No, we've done... We originally did one in Tassie. So there might have been the second one where we talked about spider lad. It's yeah. probably in the title. Just search spider lad if you haven't heard it. So... Yeah. Uh, it's, it's the bush tooth ones. Yeah. The original spider lad one is like yelling with Greeley... Tazzy Bushdorf's mm. something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, a rough recap from what I remember is uh, you <laughs> decided to dress up as Spider Man and uh, harass ice dealers. <laughs> yeah, well, you, that's... Oh, you didn't originally even plan it, didn't you? Just find the one. No, no. Well, I. It doesn't come across to me as like a very planned out thing. Yeah, like yeah, you, yeah. Read it, you wrote it down, right? Step one. <laughs> <laughs> Step Step two. two. <laughs> All right. Well, this is it. Oh. Just do a brief recap. I, yeah. I got out of jail and I get home. I go back to my mum's place and my mum's, my mum's got like all clothes and shit all folded on my bed and I'm like, oh yeah. So I'm starting to pack my shit away, like I the shit that fit me because I put on thirty kilos in jail. Yeah. So, and I find this onesie and I'm like, whoa, this is cool. I don't know if I got this when I was really cooked or. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, wow, this looks cool. So. At that time, I was... This is a Spider-Man onesie. Yeah, yeah. Spider-Man onesie. And I'm like, oh, this could be very fun. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and there was some dickhead that moved into my mum's street. So it was very pretty close to home, you know? Yeah. And I start messaging him because he's got, like, people, like, just red-lighting the whole place and yeah. making... Red lighting is when customers uh, for illicit activities park outside the house waiting for their delivery of KFC. Or if someone blows a cover in general. Just yeah. like if someone being an obvious dickhead. Just make, making too much noise. It's when, like if someone yeah. was shoplifting and they were standing there looking behind yeah, the yeah. aisles like that, you'd be like, what the fuck, cunt? Like, yeah. I'm trying to stick something down my pants, you dickhead. Just stop, yeah. you know, get the so, security's attention. Sort yeah, of. so I started messaging this guy who I've actually never met before. <laughs> and I started messaging him. And he's messaging back at the start. This is over Facebook. I'm messaging him. He's messaging back. And then he just stops messaging. And um, so I decided, I've had a few pingers. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I thought that I would start sending him voice messages because I couldn't be fuck typing anymore. And I was going to him, don't forget, dickhead, I oh. know where you live. Oh, we oh. have the voice messages oh. too. Oh, shit. Guys, this you guys are in a fucking treat. We have the voice messages that Spider Lad was sending. And I was saying to him, I was saying, Peter Parker needs a pip. Because <laughs> at that stage, I needed a pip. <laughs> I was actually pretty fucking pinging out. I was like, been in jail for a year and a half, and I got out, and my mate gave me these really good pingers. So. I decided right. to. We just really find them. I'm going to pause here. I really have to piss, and we'll come back with the voice messages. All right, we're back. We've got the messages. We've got the messages. So, so this is about Spider Lad. What you're just—is this all to the same guy? Yeah, this is just one guy. <laughs> yeah, this is. Believe it or not, most of the other people that I terrorised deleted me on Facebook. <laughs> 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 I don't know why, but I don't know why. So this is what he was sending to this cunt and just leaving. You know, like, like you know the little ten-second voice messages in your inbox. All right, let's go. Stop being a fucking rude cat. <laughs> 
<laughs> There's another one. <laughs> I can see you're active. Ring me. I know where you fucking live. Voicemails. <laughs> Pip team voicemails. Pip team voicemails. Pip team voicemails. Right. So. No, wait, 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 wait. There's just there's more. Oh, we'll do no, it again. What's that? Are you fucking home? Here we go. Pip team voicemails. Pip team. No, I'll be there soon. See ya. Fucking. Fucking. We actually met up with him. <laughs> that, that yeah, yeah fuck. So that guy, after you sent him like seventy-two messages saying Peter Parker needs a pip, call me. Can't he? He was still like, oh yeah, this could be a valued customer of mine. Yeah. Well, I imagine that that might be like the <laughs> the least of his worries, really. If he's if he's yeah. selling ice to people, that might be a normal customer. Well, I, I think that he did. He like he sort of heard about who I was and. He sort of half had an idea, and then when I got out of the car dressed up as Spider Lad, hang on, no, you've skipped way far ahead here. Why, why the fuck did you decide to meet up with him dressed as Spider Man? Oh, just to make it, uh, put a bit more laughter in the situation, you know? Right. <laughs> just to, just to make him go, whoa. Right. So you're just fucking with him. Yeah, just trying to fuck with him a bit more. Right. And then okay. When, and then when I did get there, and I jumped out dressed as spider lad I didn't know if he was going to get chirpy or what so I had an extendable bat in my hand it wasn't do extended. you always have an extendable bat you have one now no I don't have one now it's not, doesn't have the suit <laughs> maybe when he's got the suit on. only when I'm in character <laughs> well actually to be quite honest <coughs> the police took out that <laughs> in the driveway of that other I still see us anyway the news didn't mention that bit <laughs> And so I jump out, and I didn't know how it was going to go down. I didn't know if he was going to get chirpy or if anything was going to happen. So I just had my trusty bat in there, just in yeah. case, you know. Friendly neighbourhood bat. And I get out, and I'm like, "Give us a look." He, he passes me some ice, and I just <laughs> look at it, and I'm like, shaking the bag, going, "Ah, oh, it looks alright." And I put it in my pocket, <laughs> and then he's like standing there. How much? Like how much worth was it? Uh, I think it was a 1.7, so, I don't know, 350 bucks or something. <laughs> right. And, and he's sort of like, sort of standing there, waiting for me to pay. And he's just like, oh yeah, I've got to go, like, dropping hints at, like, for me to pay. And I'm like, oh yeah, mate, Peter Parker doesn't pay. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, ah! and then the look on his face, like, believe it or not, I do have a little bit of a heart. <laughs> so when I saw the look on his face I thought fuck so I he was got, just sad I just got robbed <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> the look on his face so I, I had a few Peter Parker's pingers left <laughs> and I thought I said here mate have a pinger I said they're actually not bad <laughs> I said go have one I said I'm out of here and I left and then yeah that's pretty much the story and I went home and Peter Parker got his pips. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. And then the next night, it all started again. Mm. How many people did you do it to? I think there's about seven people. <laughs> <laughs> seven people? Oh, and I was only out of jail for seven weeks. So <laughs> that's a good bad. ratio, man. One that's a week. One a week. Yeah, that's fucking... And then I, I thought I'd try to tackle the big fish. Like, where I got caught, he was like... You know, it was good. I could have had a couple of weeks off. <laughs> <laughs> but the police ruined my parade. <laughs> I was kind of shattered. Especially but after I'm the back now. <laughs> 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 the 
Pepper spray yeah. sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck pepper spray. Oh fuck. Pepper spray sucks. Yeah, and then and this yeah, so I caught up with him two yeah, days before that. Was it? No, two or three days. I think it was on the weekend before it, so four days before because it was on when a Thursday. You, when you got caught. Yeah, I got caught on Thursday, and I think it was a week before. That no, was a couple of weeks. The Kursi gig, was it? What, when we, when we caught up? Yeah, because that's when the Kursi gig got cancelled. Yeah, there was, a cu- there was a couple of weeks. Yeah, I think it was like a, maybe three weeks. But anyway, and now I've told Lewis this story. And it was so funny, like, when I got these messages from him when I was in Newcastle. Yeah. Because I'm mean, trying to explain to him, because he doesn't know about the fact that he's told me this story that, and then I've told you on the podcast, and now thousands of people around Australia love Spider Lad. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so like, it's honestly, it's gotten out of hand to the point where people people started yelling it out at shows that, you're, that you were not at and we've yeah. never said that you were going to be at. People are starting, oh, where's Spider Lad? Where's Spider Lad? Uh, it's become like a big thing to the point where I want to get, I want to spread the message even further because the podcast Greeley and I did, we talked about the original stories, they're only audio. I want to get them animated. Yeah. So, hey, check me out on Patreon, support me on Patreon. Hopefully if we can get a bit of a budget, I can make, get, turn Spider-Lad into a fucking animation yeah. and make it a children's cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's just spread the gospel and then we're going to start selling PG start PG. selling blue and red pol- polo shirts with the spider on it with like a fucking Nike hat on it oh fuck yeah. that's, that's genius that's you can it. actually become spider lad yourself yeah exactly <laughs> we want to encourage the um, <laughs> drugs are bad that's what the polo <laughs> shirts go for it <laughs> <laughs> but yeah fuck yeah and, and at least um, if you wear a spider lad polo shirt People will know you're serious. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're not letting them fuck around. <laughs> so, do you, have, do you have any more plans, Spider Lad? Oh, well, I've just been actually just kicking back. I've only been out of jail for a week and a half now. So, and that's the beauty of it, right? Since the original podcast, this cunt's been out of jail a week and a half. And we had him on stage at the comics lounge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't say. Yeah, we got him. We got Spider Lad up on the final show of the tour. And we told the whole story yeah, in, in costume and everything. Yeah, and so pretty much at the comics lounge, if you haven't been there, there's like a projector screen behind the stage. Mm. And um, so I got, I got up on stage and told the story as a part of like my, my performance. And then Spider Lads jumped up behind the projector, so you can see his silhouette <laughs> of him with the spidey hands going, and um, brought, <laughs> brought him out on the stage and got they got the whole venue to chant. Peter Parker needs a pip. <laughs> it's <was some> fucking <laughs> legendary <laughs> shit, man. Woo! If you had told me a few months ago that, yeah, man, this tour has been fucking amazing. It's been good. And that's, that's I, I think this tour has made me go, oh, that's what I want my shows to be. Is like, obviously, the main thing is me doing like an hour, ten, at least of like pure fucking really good stand-up. You're, you're doing at least like an hour and twenty at most of them, bro. Yeah, like, I think it got to like, a, I think at the last show it was like an hour thirty, maybe even longer. With no rape jokes. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Couldn't yeah. get through that one with no rape jokes. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, you definitely, you, you bring it its own show, you know, I'm like, I was stoked that I could add something to it. But yeah, that, yeah, like I, obviously the main bit is me doing stand-up, but like I love having just <clears throat> spontaneous shit and we got Joseph Green up last on, on the last show as well, yeah. just on a whim, who's been in a few of my videos and we have heaps of special guests, Isaac Butterfield came through, Lachlan Fairbarn came through as well. I just like having, just just my, my stuff is going to be real good and then before that, fuck it, let's just do some weird shit. Yeah, well man, and make people... It as good people, and loose as it can be. And if people have already paid for their tickets, it's just icing on the cake, really. You know what I mean? Yeah. You've bought the cake and it comes with a few extra fucking freros. <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah man, let's, let's, talk, let's start to talk about some of the shit on the tour. Like, yeah. Um, now, Lewis has got one of the subjects in his set is about a cruise. And on the cruise, there were lots of fucking individuals that were missing things and yeah. we get to the first venue and oh they... yeah so the whole 10 minutes i'm i'm making fun of amputees and people that are missing so like there's a guy missing a toe missing a hand missing an eyeball so like 10 minutes solid is how i start the show making fun of people who are missing body parts yeah <laughs> and then we get to the geelong venue <laughs> and the manager of the venue ladies and gentlemen has a hook for a hand <laughs> 
<laughs> Captain Hook. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what Lewis said. He's like, it's the captain of the ship. <laughs> oh, man. I, know. I was like, fuck, I can't do the show now. But yeah. then I was like, you know what? Fuck it, you. It was a good sport. Yeah. It was a good sport. Mm. Oh, that, I, f- I forgot about up. that. Yeah. And then when I was out, out the front of the Geelong venue, um, I was standing on the street. These guys did a drive by with a blunt. Do you remember oh, that? Yeah. They, they, like literally, these fans that were at the gig did a drive by. I was just standing on the side of the street. This car pulls up and goes, "Really? Do you want a blunt?" And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> yeah, I was fucking stoked. I ran over. I was like, "Thank you." And then then they cruised off, and I was like, "Fuck yeah, that's too long." <laughs> it's too long. That's the kind of shit that if Greeley wasn't there would just never happen. Just never happen. Shows. I, never. I know. But the, the good thing is, is that you do have a small part of your fan base that are stoners. Oh yeah, and, definitely. Yeah, I've and got stoners like, like giving weed to people on tour. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just cleaning up on your like niche stoner. I mean, they fan can't base. give it to me. So exactly. they can give it to someone. You know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, there you go, man. You don't even have to dress up as Spider Lad for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then what, what was next? Was um, it was Bendigo? Bendigo was next. We, yeah, we went to the church. It was beatboxing in the church. Oh, yeah. Greeley was walking around in the church going, Jesus! Jesus! In this, in this giant church, and the echo was crazy. Yeah. I don't think they appreciated it, but I did. And then <laughs> the, the place we were performing at was like a theatre, and it was run by these, like, little gaggle of old women yeah and we got there and a few of them was like not keen but one of them goes oh are you doing offensive comedy i love offensive comedy and and there was only supposed to be one of the women working there and it was the one that was really keen she was supposed to be working there but then she just brought her two friends along Mm. just to watch and they were just not into it (laughs) at all they were like fuck this he swears well i remember i I remember (laughs) stop swearing yeah so i think i started the show taking the piss out of the old yeah yeah you did you you roasted them she loved it i remember she came up to me before the show she goes if you're going on (laughs) she goes if you're going to pick on people don't forget the fat women (laughs) (laughs) i was just like what yeah (laughs) after the show she came up to me because i signed someone's tits at the show and she came up to me she's like a fucking 70 year old woman she's Mm. like would you like to sign my my titties? <laughs> and I was like, no, thank you, darling. But I appreciate the offer. You would have had to get on your knee. I uh, know, I know. I she would have pulled him out the bottom of her t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but here, you don't know if you're sh- signing a crutch or a boob. It hangs to her crutch. <laughs> And then, that was Bendigo. That was Bendigo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was after that? Um, Actually, you would have loved Bendigo, man. That was hailing so bad, ice was just falling. <laughs> didn't have been perfect. Yeah, so you didn't even need to go out, Rob. I, I would have got to Rob Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so the, <laughs> and then what was after Bendigo? You went. Let, you let did Canberra. Up, let me get up two dates. Yeah, I did Canberra. Because I didn't come for Canberra. No, because flights are too expensive. Well, that's completely fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, where are we? Are the two dates. Yes, we did Canberra. What happened in Canberra? Oh, yeah, someone apparently around the corner from the venue we did got fucking murdered there, so that was cool, because last time we went to Canberra, we went to the servo station, and then I think two days after we went to the servo station, someone got stabbed to death at the same place, yeah. at the same time, yeah. so we dodged a bullet there. <laughs> um, oh, here we go, then uh, Hobart. Hobart, Hobart was pretty good. It was still like, I feel Hobart was probably one of the more quietest shows of the whole tour, yeah, Hobart was interesting. Like sometimes, every now and then, you have like a, a quiet show where they're 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 loving it and they're paying attention, but they don't laugh. It's weird. Like yeah, you like you, and then I kind of I kind of got off Hobart thinking, oh, I think I tanked for an hour. No. But then afterwards, everyone was like, man, that was so fucking good. Yeah. I think it's when it's a younger crowd. Yeah, and, and, and when it's a smaller room as well, people are like. If it's their first comedy show too, which happens a little bit, sometimes people are like unsure of what to do. Yeah, Whereas, and it was also in a rock pub, and there was a band on the other side of the pub as yeah, well. Yeah, it wasn't the best. So it wasn't like it wasn't complete, no mm. distractions. You know, it was. Um, yeah, and it was just it was an interesting one because that's my hometown. Yeah, and you know, I brought a few good friends to it, but. All my mates stood at the back. I was in the killing. Shadows. I was killing at the back. Yeah. And then, I, and then the front was just, just like quiet. Ah, oh, I'm enjoying it. But yeah, I feel <laughs> it was definitely the smallest, in, most intimate. Like even yeah. when you think of the other, like Gold Coast was 
you know, um, kind of smaller room. And Bendigo was small, but with Bendigo and Geelong, you still had a good distance between you and the audience, and they felt yeah. more like an audience. Whereas the, the Brisbane Hotel and Hobart, they're right there. Um, and I've done comedy there a lot of times, mm. and it was it was just an interesting arvo, I think, as well. The time it was like six pm, I think. But yeah, it was a weird time. I think I think next time I'll, I'll next time I do Hobart, I'll do a theatre because the, yeah, I remember the first time I went to Hobart, I did that same venue, and it was a really good show, but it, it was, was still it was, was a little bit of that oh where the fuck are we vibe. Yeah, and it <coughs> was also like last time it worked better because it was like four on the arvo. It was still. Mm. At four in the hour, there's nothing happening in Hobart. There's no yeah. traffic. You know what I mean? It's on a Saturday, so yeah. But because it was like six p.m., it was a little bit more in that night time when things yeah. are starting to warm up for the night. So yeah. Whereas yeah, last time it kind of had that mm. still. And then, then we went to Adelaide after Hobart, and, and Ad, I think Adelaide is where the tour really started to get yeah. fucking like the tour and both of our performances started to get really, really good. Yeah. Oh, like I actually fucked up in Adelaide I remember in my first like bit I did a couple jokes and then I, sw- I sw- switched my- something around and it threw me off and I went oh I fucked up guys <laughs> well, anyways and I introduced Lachlan Fairburn on, and you know I, ma- I kept it rolling it didn't make it awkward but I did my head in after that one so like Adelaide I was happy with but still that was what pushed me to really step it up for that the was the first ones. big one as well mm. like that was that was a huge stage that was very different to the other ones because the other ones were regional smaller ones but that one was that one was fucking huge that one was actually for me was really was really great that yeah. one was a fucking loose crowd too they were oh, man. that was a difficult crowd to control they were so up for it yeah at one, I, po- at one point you're just like fucking let me do my show yeah, yeah. yeah I had to scream at them shut the fuck up let yeah. me do my show and someone Someone brought a box of pears up oh. and slammed it on the stage, and yeah. like it was, it was a fucking amazing, real funny, good show. But it was super rowdy, which I love. I love that. Like, it's 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 not heckling. It's like participating. It's yeah. like joining in. I fucking love that well, that energy. You said something off the cuff that sounded like it could be taken in a racist way. And it wasn't a racist thing you said, but then you kind of acknowledged you're like, oh, oh that's I right, won't yeah. say that that would be racist and then someone up the back of the crowd went oh be more racist <laughs> oh, yeah and I was like no man I'm no I, like, I know I have the fucking Heil Hitler haircut but I'm not gonna I don't have the Heil Hitler thoughts underneath the haircut no yeah <laughs> just be more racist that, was, that blew me out and yeah, yeah there was so the thanks, pears thanks Adelaide <laughs> and on the pears that the guy brought for the stage racist. This is the one thing that tripped me out because there was a few pairs that came over the tour, but this guy was. He brought a box creative. of six pairs and he sticky taped all of our faces to the pairs, but then also one of them was Hitler too. Oh, and Osama bin Laden wasn't. And Osama bin Laden. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there was, was you strange. and me and. I think Luke was one as well. Yeah. Which was fucking just that very strange. Weird. And um, yeah, Adelaide is where the slut dropping began. Yeah. Yeah. So I was walking around with uh, Bree and Adam the photographer and tour manager and I think you were off catching up with Sev yeah yeah and um, yeah and then I'd slept dropped with Sev the night before but I was like I need it I feel, you know I'm so honoured that Lewis has taken me on tour and he's very well known you know like I'm so honoured that you guys and all his fans that are opening up to me and willing to listen to me talk shit you know what I mean so I felt like I needed to do something to help promote the tour and I don't know where, but slut drops just came to mind. I remember asking you if you were down to play a game of truth or slut drop. Yeah, I think that's where it started. Yeah. And then I was like, ah, uh, I think the truth stuff is boring. I think, fuck the truth shit, just do slut drops. Yeah, yeah. And you were right, <laughs> man. He was right. And there's this thing that, like, goes around Adelaide. It's like a bar with, but it's a big bike and, like, 12 people it's can almost, sit It's almost, yeah, it's almost like a tram, that, but it's a bike <coughs> and, and all these people, like, six people on either side of the carriage are facing the bar but underneath the bar they have pedals and somehow even though they're pedaling like sideways it makes the thing go forwards yeah. so people are just getting pissed while they pedal yeah yeah which would get you really drunk because your blood's pumping you know yeah. what I mean it'd be really like smashed in half an hour and we were da- walking down the street we saw one coming along and it was like a hen's night yeah. and then all you could hear the you know and yeah they came around, they, they looked over, and I've gone, ladies, and just started dancing like a fuckwit. Yeah. And I don't think it was on, oh, maybe, I can't remember, but boom, dropped a slight drop, and they went off. And um, 
we didn't film it, we were spilling because it was just such a natural moment. Yeah. And then about half an hour later, we were still walking around and another one came by. And I was like, oh, Bree, get the camera ready. Yeah. Boom, and it worked perfect. It, was a di- it wasn't the same guys, it was different because yeah. they have a few of them going around the city. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was Adelaide. And then uh, after that was Perth. Yeah. And Perth was Perth was cool. That was we did the the comedy lounge. Yeah, it's called. It's a really new club. If you're in Perth, go check out the comedy lounge. It's fucking great. Felt like like a, it's like a little. Oh, it's not little. It's like maybe 150 people, which is little compared to the comedy lounge in Melbourne, which yeah. is like 500 or something stupid. Um, but the, the comedy lounge is 150, and it felt like a real like a like the the comedy clubs that you see on TV in America. That, yeah. that, that's the vibe that it had, and I just felt. Getting on stage there, I felt like, oh, fuck. I felt like I was in New York. Except, yeah. Uh, everyone looked like a mutant because they were from Perth. <laughs> <laughs> except for the ladies, man. The ladies in Perth are amazing. Oh, the women in Perth are fucking beautiful. I think that every time I go there, it's crazy. I feel like in Perth, there's there's the only thing you, you can do is like work on yourself as a person <laughs> and become really nice and really beautiful. But, but that's meth. for the girls. <laughs> yeah, or meth. So you don't really see the meth heads, but the, but the women that are just regular people are like really nice, fucking beautiful. But I feel like every single dude in Perth is punching above their weight. Yeah. I've never seen so many dudes walking around going, Bleh! and then just like followed by this fucking 11 out of 10 woman, like, hello, that's, I'm a very nice person. That's why I like Perth, man. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I just walk around, yeah. Yeah. Like, you they, know. Like, they hey, are, man. they're really down to like, mm-hmm. when you walk down the street in Melbourne, yeah. like chicks will just turn their nose up to you, but in Perth, they'll yeah. be like, hey, how are you going? They have yeah. time to talk to you. It's, it's, it's smaller, just so yeah. weird. Because I live in Melbourne and it's like if you try and talk to a girl, because I, you know, I have a girl, so if I'm talking to a girl, it's always a platonic thing. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. in Melbourne, if, if I try and talk to a girl, it's like, oh, fuck off. Yeah, yeah. But like in, in Perth, it's like, oh yeah, I'll talk to you. I think it makes them so much hotter too. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, being a humble person is way more attractive in my mm. opinion. But um, it's just population, man. It yeah. really comes down to population. You know, you've grown up in Melbourne. I've grown up... I was born in the States. I grew up in Tassie and I've been back and forth. I've been in so many different uh, cities with different mm. populations. And it really comes down to... The more people there are, the less time they give to people. Yeah. Yeah. And the more kind of... Well, there's, there's less but, repercussions for being a cunt. Exactly. If there's more people, you know. But you mean. can't... I mean, in Tassie, if you want to be a cunt for a week the whole place yeah. knows you know what I mean and then you're the cunt mm. and then you got to spend eight, I've done that I did that when I was 21 got real angry for a couple of weeks and everyone was like really he's a cunt and it took me like eight years of hard work to undo that <laughs> you know what I mean and it's, it's so much harder to go from an uh, asshole to nice person yeah there's still yeah. some people because I fucking deal with that because people see my shit online and they go oh he's a cunt yeah and then they meet me and I get, I get so often I get thanked for being nice when I meet people. When well, you're like, just oh, being thank yourself. You. Thanks for being so nice. And like, I'm not being nice. I'm just being yeah, yeah, not you're, an asshole. Lewis is a very polite person. You know, like, it's, it's funny. Like, I, I do know you have a dark side. And when you like to get angry at things, like... <laughs> I, we, I was showing Spider Lad Susan McLean. You know yeah, what I mean? That was, and, that was an angry. Bit. Yeah, yeah, I loved it because I, I watched him over the years fester on that and that yeah. bit when you look at the camera and you go, "If you fuck with me on the internet," you yeah. know what I mean? And I'm like, "Oh, there's Louis when he's angry," but he's yeah. a fucking lovely dude, you know. And um, yeah, that was that's, the best. That that's was what fantastic. I, yeah, I feel as well, man. That's why you're you're doing so well is because you really do give time to people every gig. You know, you're hanging around, talking to every person, getting a photo. And man, like, Brisbane was crazy. We had, like, a snake of people. 450 people in Brisbane. That's the most I've ever met. But I met every single person. Yeah. And uh, it was... Um, I don't know. I feel like I owe it to the people coming out and supporting me. And you're not putting a uh, meet and greet on the poster either. You know what I mean? You're not trying to... Put, you're not trying to pitch mm. that he's not trying to be like Ooh, you pay for your ticket and you get to meet me yeah no he right. actually just wants to meet you because yeah. you're coming to his show to support him it's not yeah. like a, and you get to see me you know yeah, what I mean I like, hate fucking charging like like like, if, if, like if, you, if you do a show and then you charge for meet and greet because there's too many people to meet everyone that's cool but like if you're charging like just hello I'm here you get to meet me 50 bucks I don't, I don't know I just feel like that's a bit weird yeah, it is what it is but that's why your fans are so loyal man because you put in that extra hard work you know and yeah. and watch, be, like watching you grow over the years and then being on the 
you know, roller coaster with you for this tour, I've got to see that firsthand. And you know, you see the fans that have the tattoos and the ones That's that fuck. the ones that have been there for the years, and, and I can be like, yeah, remember this, remember that, because I've watched it and been yeah. there as well. So yeah. it's it's cool to nerd out with them, mm. and and because I see you as a friend, and you know, like I see it as my friend. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't know about that, man. <laughs> <Bit of distance>. <laughs> <laughs> of course, but, bro. Yeah, yeah, but like it, you know, see, it's so interesting. It's 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 a beautiful thing when you get to see a friend's achievement sparkle in other people's eyes. Mm. You know what I mean? And you see, and you get to see them going, yeah, and this. And I can remember when you were talking about how you wanted to do this, and wanted to do that, and then yeah. So I've I've got to see firsthand the different stages, the the dreams, the you know befores and afters, everything, all the repercussions, and it's fucking cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, man. It's, I feel I feel like it's all happening. Um, so thanks to everyone who came up to the tour, man. It's yeah. cool. And, and we'll, 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 we'll get stuck on Perth. Perth. So try, try and... All right, let's do all the shows. Let's right, do all so, the shows. So Perth was, was, Perth was great. So this is what I've, this is what I've noticed because this, I think this is the first tour where I've done like a second show in a few cities because the first one sold out so quick. Because I think I only did it like once in last, last tour. But this year we did it in, in a few cities. I've noticed that when you do two shows, because one sold out, the first show is like full of the keenest people. The keenest people who booked like first week, got tickets, fuck yeah, I'm going to be there. And then they just sit there and they wait. They go, I can't fucking wait for this. And then the second show is always filled with the disorganized people who want to go, but and not as much as the first people. Yeah, yeah. So the second, the first show was always like electric. Fuck yeah, the show's here. This is sick. And then the second show was always, yeah, this might be good. I'm going to yell some shit out though. Yeah. <laughs> like the second show is always like looser yeah. than the first show. Um, just because, I don't know, it's, it's just like when, if you get 300 disorganized cunts in one room, some wild shit's going to happen. Yeah. Like I think at the second Melbourne show we had a midget in the front row who was oh. just having shots and drinking like eight oh. beers. He See, was... you know, man, watching you do this crowd work is one thing. <laughs> the midget in the front row, oh my fucking <laughs> god! Wait for that video, guys. Yeah. This, that the video I saw. There was there was a I won't call him a midget. That's fucking rude. There was a dwarf in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. hey, he wanted to be called dwarf. Yeah, he. But wanted, at the yeah. start of the night, Luke Kidgel was like. He asked if, if anyone's thought they were special. And he went, oh, I'm a dwarf. Yeah. And Luke went, I don't know if you can say that. And he went, I can. And he was like, I'm a dwarf. So yeah. there was no, no yeah. one was going, you're a this, you're a that. It was a label he chose to own. And yeah, yeah. for other people's entertainment, he was a fucking legend. I had he a chat to him at the back. Yeah, I, I met him afterwards and yeah. we got a photo. The photo's hilarious because he's, uh, he's literally about two feet tall. Is that your kneecap? Uh, I think I'll, I have the photo here. Yeah, I'll get it up. Yeah, yeah he might be like a, at my knees. Um, but I got told by the owner of the lounge who came backstage and said, mate, there's a, there's a dwarf in the crowd. He came up and he gave us his tickets and then he went, hey, everyone, watch this. And then he just ran to the bathroom. <laughs> that, that's it. He was like, hey, look at me, I'm a fucking dwarf. Woo! <laughs> and, he, and then, yeah, I talked. And as soon as I found out that there was, there was a guy in the crowd like that, I was like, oh, I'm going to spend time on him. Yeah, here he is. He's like just above my waist. Okay, so, so he's not two feet. I think he said he was two feet. He did. But that's he's taller than true. two feet. Yeah, he must be. Like two feet's three. like, six, like four six, foot or something. Yeah, at least two yeah. feet's like three and a half foot or something. Two yeah. feet's like sixty-five centimeters. He was pretty. Yeah. He was pretty small. Yeah, he was. He was small for a, for a dwarf even. But yeah, he was. As soon as I found out that, that that there was a dwarf heckler in in the front row, I was like, you know what? I'm <laughs> I'm getting I'm spending time on this guy. <laughs> I'm gonna get the video six foot eight comedian versus dwarf heckler. And you know what, guys? I think I spent about five minutes on him, so that'll be coming out. It went, for, it went for longer than five minutes, man. Really? You paced yourself. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> paced yourself. As soon as I, because we were backstage, you know what I mean. And then we heard Luke, and we we're like, oh shit. The bloke and then. It, though. Yeah, yeah, I, I was I was waiting for the moment. I was like, when is Lewis going to, you know, I was in the crowd and yeah, you paid. Because everybody else who got up on stage kind of pussied out and they were like, oh, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. And I was like, fuck this. He asked me to spit a rap. That one of the, when I started off and I was doing the chant, yeah. he was like, spit a rap. And I just didn't go there. I was just like, no, nah, I'm not going to risk it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was Everyone. a pussy. Oh, but like, man, that's you were you were at an experience level now where you can comfortably 
be halfway in an hour show and go, all right, I'm just going to do this for 10 minutes, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then go back. But that was like, out of the, all the shows, I, I think you actually missed out some stuff because you went so far off on that end. And then they kept yeah. going, just, him and his mates were drinking hard. Oh, and yeah. And so they distracted you through the whole show. Yeah, but, I, I, at one point I had to seriously be like, hey guys, I'm going to have to kick you out if you don't. And, and then they were fine. They were totally cool and they were, they were lovely afterwards. But, but uh, yeah, I, I think I actually, in the second show... I was going halfway through my like my feminism bit and I got halfway through it and then I just did like five minutes on the dwarf and then I completely forgot where I was and yeah. I was just like, well, fuck it, next bit. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you killed it, man. It did very well at it. I mean, after Perth, like... Well, because Perth like, had no sleep. I fucking went hard there. And then Danger from Children of Poseidon was there. Yeah. And he was loose. Just running around going... Argh! Yeah, Danger was just, was, was just screaming. I don't know if you caught... The, there's a Snapchat of uh, of Greeley was like, oh, we should have a slut drop competition during the, the meet and greet. And Danger gets up with a pint of beer that he mm. just bought, tips it all over himself. Yeah, well, he didn't tip it. He kind of like threw it in the air and caught it. Like, yeah, with his, his head. head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he was just covered in beer, and and you were pissing yourself, and I was so unimpressed. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, just like, I'm just gonna pretend to laugh right now. I was just like, fuck, man, this is because you know what it was. It was a brand new venue, and you know, no one's ever done that, and probably no one ever will do that again. Yeah, you're exactly right. On their fucking stage, I'm just so used to beer. I'm so used to the Brisbane Hotel. <laughs> we rock up a sound check and there's a condom on the fucking stage. Yeah. True story. Yeah. Fucking, <laughs> turns out there was a guy there the night before, fucking like one of those people that like bang nails into their noses and do tricks. And yeah, he was yeah. like snorting a condom. But yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Comedy Lounge for Danger and his beer spilling ways. I hope you guys have a spat. <laughs> it was a fucking awesome place to perform in. Yeah. And uh, as well, like I've done uh, so much hip, st- hip hop stuff in Perth. So that was like one of the first gigs that I brought a lot of crew to. So yeah. when I performed there and I was feeling, I was like, I needed to, uh, for, for I think myself. Perth is where you really hit your stride as well. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I loved it. And um, then we went over to Queensland. Gold Coast was next. Yeah. Gold, Gold Coast was a good show. We had uh, Jared from the Big Les show show yeah. up, which was cool. Um, and that, yeah, that was, I did a whole bunch of, a bit more dream world gear because we were around the corner that's <laughs> right that was good that was good Gold Coast was nice it was like this yeah it was a part of the big arts theatre but it was like a little underground yeah. club nice little seated setting yeah cool little stage and um, yeah Jared from the Big Les Show was an absolute legend it was He's an honour to meet him man like uh, his cartoons have saved some very very boring afternoons in Tasmania for me yeah fuck <laughs> so big ups Jared <laughs> fucking legend uh, after New after Bris us uh, after Gold Coast, <laughs> we went to Brisbane and then uh, Newcastle and Brisbane was was Brisbane I did that was four hundred and fifty people which is by far the biggest crowd I've ever done that was like a proper huge theatre like to give you an idea of how big it was I got there and we walked up the stairs and we walked on stage and I was like oh this venue is fucking huge and then I turned around and I realised that it wasn't the venue that was the stage. Yeah. I was like, oh, I thought that's where the audience was going. That's where I go. Fuck. Yeah. And then I turned around and then you saw all of the seats and I was like, holy shit. Yeah, man. And that that was, man. Yeah, that was so big. I thought the stage was where the audience was. That was so big. It had a lift that went up two floors to yeah. get backstage. Yeah. Like for us to get to our dressing room, we had to get in a lift and go up two floors. Yeah. It so was... now if you got, if you don't have a lift in your venue, I don't talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Man. That was, and I feel like that was, I, when I did that show, I was like, oh fuck, that's what my life has to be. And then that one was, it was golden. And like at the end of the show, oh, the crowd was so good. Brisbane was just so up for it. I love Brisbane. Um, I think, cause I'd, Started off my set with like doing a slut drop and then making someone feel uncomfortable about it. Yeah. And go, oh, what, you want to get up here and do it? And they usually go, no. Brisbane was the first time. I was like, what, you want to get up here and do it? And the guy's going, yep. And just got up. <laughs> no fear. Yeah, straight on the yeah. stage. And like, and I was, I'd already lined up a mate of mine, like a uh, rapper. No. Yeah, we really wanted someone to do it because Greeley had been trying to get people up and no one would do it. So in Brisbane, Greeley organized like a plan. Yeah, audience, yeah. Which... You know, it, it's cool. But then fucking Brisbane, of course, even though we had someone organised, the first person really looks at he's like, yep, I'll do it. Yep, yeah, straight away. And he got up and, um, yeah, and like, that's a good thing with the slap drops as well, you know. Uh, people don't know what 
like so many people that were there as well had never been to a comedy show. I met yeah. a lot of people that this is their first stand up experience. You know, and when you go into a show like that, you're like sitting there, oh, I don't know what to expect, what's going to happen, yeah. um, how serious are they going to take themselves, or what is this, you know, yeah. and if I walk out and fucking do a slap drop, <laughs> then instantly everyone knows that it's going to be a fucking stupid loose time, how, you know. How good are Brisbane slap drops? The, good? the Brisbane slap drops were pretty good. I did the double dipper. That's how I, I won my yeah, slap drop comp. One, yeah. I did the like slight drop went back up and just when everyone thought I was finished I went back for a second <laughs> the yeah, double went, drop the, the double dipper when, <laughs> and, where, where um, was the max slight drop the max slight oh the mix slight drop the fucking McDonald's one that was in Wollongong but um after uh, so Brisbane was fucking amazing like yeah and then at the end you got the standing ovation and uh, oh, that was like a, that felt like a fucking rock concert man I'll never forget that like that yeah and uh, yeah, Brisbane's always always been special for me. It's one of my favorite places to perform, just because they're fucking animals. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully next year, I, I, I mean, I just want to do either that venue or even bigger next year. I reckon you can do it, man. Um, but yeah, so that yeah that the Brisbane was like, oh fuck, I need to start doing like 450, 500 people in every state instead yeah. of splitting it across two. I think that's what I want to do next tour. Yeah, I agree. Um, <clears throat> And after Brizzy, we went to Newcastle, and that was that was great. So Brisbane, when we got to Brisbane, that's when we started driving. But did we start driving in Gold Coast? Gold Coast, then we drove. No, we, to we, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, right. we went to Brisbane. We drove down to Gold Coast and back up to yeah. Brizzy to stay that night. I was staying with my mate as from Illegal Merchandise, an absolute legend. Just a quick plug on your podcast. No if, you, if you need clothes printed, hit up Illegal Merchandise. He's an absolute legend. He looked after me. He had some really good cherry ripe edibles. <laughs> 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 Fucking cherry ripe slice, man. What a chef. Yeah, it was yeah. amazing. So we started the driving part of the tour. Newcastle was great. That was I like Newcastle. It's like a it's like a nice quiet place to, to hang out. Yeah. It's cool. And the shows are always great because I feel like they don't really get too many shows there. So Newcastle was good and yeah. we had uh, Isaac Butterfield come through as well as a surprise drop in, which was cool. Oh, this is what we need to talk about for Newcastle. Yeah. You know, like across the tour, we've been finding out good nicknames. Yeah. And we're trying to find people that you know had fucked up nicknames. Yeah, names. I've been doing this crowd work bit about who has who has a friend with a nickname, but their friend hates the nickname. Yeah. This guy didn't hate it, but in Newcastle we came across Buddy Dick. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that's so, right. So the night before the Newcastle show. I met up with this hip hop head. What a dick! <laughs> I met up with this hip hop head called Midas, and um, he was an absolute legend. He picked me up and he took me all around uh, Newcastle. We showed me the local spots. He took me to a pub where there was a comedy night on the yeah. night before your gig. So I put my name down and I sat there and we had some cheap tacos and a beer and we watched all these like local Newcastle comedians get up and have a go and they all fucking did well and. Um, and then I got up and I smashed it. I went as hard as I could. It was a bit of a rowdy pub environment. Yeah. And so there was a lot of people in the pub that weren't paying attention. And if you got to see me live, you know, I, I grab everyone's attention in the room. That's yeah. what, I, what I'm there to do. So I just got up and I think I beatboxed and instantly just got everyone's attention and yeah. just started doing jokes. And I talked about uh, smoke of bongs as I do. And um, someone in the crowd came up to me afterwards and they were like, fucking, you want a bong, mate? come back to ours. I was like sweet so I met some locals in Newcastle they were absolute legends and um, went back to their place and yeah this guy was butter dick and um, the story goes so this is a, a fella and a chick that lived together they're like best yeah. mates and the chick was going out with a bloke and she found out the bloke was cheating on her with three individual girls Yeah. so she was pretty dirty because she'd been with the guy for a while and he was a sleazebag you yeah. know and Coincidentally, her housemate, this fellow, his name's Reese, he um, he went out in the town in Newcastle. It was a small place. He ended up going home with a chick that he picked up in the town, and they're in the middle of it. And he's, you know, he's giving it to her, no condom. This is details he told me to put in the story, just to help fucking fucking fine. And um, so yeah, he's banging her with no condom on, <laughs> <laughs> and he pulled out and walked into the kitchen. And um, thought, and he realised, oh, this is the guy that just fucked over my best friend. Yeah. So he went to the fridge, and he fucking got out a tub of butter, and he fucked it. 
and after he fucked the girl. Yeah, dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, like, by the way, he filmed this and he showed it to me. After yeah, the show <laughs> I made well, Lewis watch Getting it. his dick out and rubbing it in some stranger's butter after he just fucked his roommate. So not no, only, no, no, yeah, yeah, fuck the guy's roommate. Yeah, yeah, fuck the guy's roommate. So it's like fucking just like pussy juice and dick. Dick cheese in someone else's butter. Did yeah. he finish in the butter butt? Oh, I don't know. He should have yeah. finished in the butter. He should have. <laughs> and um, but yeah, so yeah, butter dick and um, and fuck man, they were they were hilarious. Like they were trolling a guy that was sending them dick pics and making them put his fucking dick in burger buns and then wrapping it in lettuce. And he almost got his dick out the meat and grate. I he was did. like, ah, all, all ages just... show! All ages show! You don't want to end up on the sex offenders list card. <laughs> no, so he he put it away. He, well, he never got it out. So, uh, big shout outs to H and Reese. You guys are fucking legends. That was a funny... That was, And that's the best... Uh, that's all... I don't know if that's the best nickname of the tour. Well, that, that, that's um, hilarious about the... They were getting some, like trolling that guy to get his, get him to put his dick in a buns. Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah, yeah. I've actually seen that this happen firsthand <laughs> well, yeah, at Fulham in jail all right? <laughs> at Fulham in jail <laughs> oh here we this, go wait, this, this bloke right, he was a mate of mine yeah. he, was, he was an Arab yeah. and he had a big dick like a long dick and he used to like always get it out and I'm like fuck off like <laughs> swinging it around and doing all sorts of crazy and shit and what else are you going to do when you're in jail yeah, yeah. and then and there was this one screw, which is a prison officer, and she used to like be a dirty bitch and like play jokes, and the guys used to slap her on the ass and all sorts of shit, right? Yeah, right. One day we're all sitting in really, like, yeah, this is a true story. Fuck. Honestly, we're all sitting in this lodge, like the that nine people live in there, and there's no its own kitchen. It's like a self-contained like yeah jail yeah, thing, yeah. anyway. And this guy thought it would be funny that to get his dick and put it into a hot dog roll <laughs> and put sauce on it and goes to this officer go hey do you want a sausage <laughs> <laughs> and it was absolutely hilarious <laughs> and she actually took it quite well like, I said to him because he said he, he said he was, she took it well <laughs> he, no, because he said he was going to do it and I'm like, I don't know if you should do that, man, because <laughs> this whole sex offender register, yeah. and like, yeah. they will send you to protection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you like, that's like full. I feel like, like if Spider Lad is going, I don't think you should do that, man. Yeah, you <laughs> <I> definitely should. <laughs> yeah. But when he did do it, she was a pretty good sport. <laughs> and then like, she kept going in there, like she saw how big his dick was, and then she's like, she she was like up for him, like. Yeah. <laughs> sneaking into his bedroom to do like they do a muster can in the morning and they'd sneak into his bedroom and she'd be like oi wake up and like shake him and that yeah, right. I don't know if she'd done anything else but wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. just wanted to see if it would flop oh, out oh hot dog dick <laughs> hot dog dick yeah. Um, but yeah so then yeah we, we did Sydney yeah yeah we did Sydney and uh, what did we do we did, we did two shows in Sydney yeah. they were both fun uh, we got to wrap the podcast up in about Fuck, I've only got about 10 minutes left. Alright, sweet. 15 minutes left. So Sydney was fucking awesome uh, that, at the ACA Theatre, which is always a fun place. Um, anything weird happened in Sydney? Um, not really, eh? No. Tried to get Frenchie down to perform in Sydney, but he was at a wedding. But uh, hey, maybe next next year. Yeah, not too much. At we'll stay. Yeah, it was good. It was a really good venue. The staff were really nice. Mm. I got to see... Hugh Jackman's jacket from the movie Wolverine. They took me upstairs. I don't care about this nerdy shit. No. I know, they took Greeley upstairs and apparently they had a fucking Star Wars comic book Wolverine collection up there from actual movies. Yeah. And Greeley wasn't like, hey man, you should check this out. I was like... Hey, You're man. a dog! I didn't know it was there! <laughs> if someone took me upstairs to a venue and they had a bunch of edibles, I'd be like, I don't give a fuck, but you know who will care. Hey Greeley, come have a look. You were on stage when he took me up there. The thing was, I felt awkward about it because yeah. the owner of the place, yeah, I got off, you got on, yeah. and I've gone up to watch your show, and the guy's gone, come with me, and like taking me out and showing me all this come shit. And the whole time I'm like, yeah, mate, this is real cool. Yes, I like Star Wars. Yep. <laughs> you know, and I was just trying to get back to watch your show. Yeah. And I, but he was such a nice guy, I didn't yeah, want to be was. rude. He was, cool. he was an absolute legend. Um, so, yeah, and then we did Wollongong, which was, Wollongong was real good. It was, 
first time you've been there. Wollongong's fucking lovely. Yeah. Everyone was telling me there was going to be shit and it yeah. was going to be awful. And I, I was I was like, I literally got there and I was like, oh, this is really nice. Yeah, some real nice people at the show too, man. Yeah, like, yeah. Had a few good chats with people there. Um, it was a nice little warm room, you yeah. know. I, like, fuck, I'd love to go back there again. Oh, oh you accidentally, you accidentally... I oh, fucked up. It's said Newcastle. You said, Newcastle. You got, I was like, it's great to be here in Newcastle. And the whole yeah. crowd went... Aah! And then Lewis roasted me for like, the whole show. Like, every time he'd be like, all right, Newcastle. Like, just yeah, the whole... Every time, it's great to be here in Newcastle. Oh, sorry, I'm in Perth, Sydney. I don't know where the fuck I am. Uh, Wollongong, wherever. And I did the same thing with Joseph Green in Melbourne. Yeah. I uh, fucking... Like, because Joseph Kahn is the director of this new movie that I'm waiting to watch. And for some reason... You I, keep thinking about Joseph Kahn. And I was like, don't say Joseph Kahn. You literally, up. before you got up, you said to me and Joseph, you're like, now, I need to not say Joseph Kahn. I'm going to say Joseph Green. Joseph sure Green. Sure enough, you get up and you go, all right, we've got a new act. He's a drop in. You might have seen him in some of Lewis's videos. Everyone start chanting, Joseph Kahn. <laughs> <laughs> and then like the whole fucking crowd of 300 people are going, Joseph Kahn. And his name, Joseph Green, is on the screen behind me. Oh, and was yeah, it? Yeah, so the whole crowd is just <laughs> <laughs> what? I didn't know. Like, that. Yeah, yeah. Have, have, so have you funny. been eating edibles before this? Show? Yeah, no, but no. I've been pretty good. Like, I feel that towards the end of the tour, especially this is one thing I learned meeting and yeah. connecting with so many people. My brain was just at full capacity, eh? And yeah, even at the comics lounge, I was missing little parts of my jokes, but at the same time, I was that comfortable. I was mm. adding bits in there. So yeah, yeah. It was really fun, you know. It can get to just meeting that many, like the social energy of not only doing the show and then getting the emotional feedback of like the laughter and the yelling and, and heckling and all that kind of shit. But then after that, meeting everyone after, yeah. I think that's what really takes it out of you. And that's why whenever I do the meet and greet, everyone's like, oh, what are you doing afterwards? And I'm like, going home. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> It does, it does wear you down, man. Mm. But, um, but I love it. It's fucking awesome. Quickly, one more nickname. Yeah. Cunt face. Yes, we must hear about cunt face. Spider lad. So this is one of the best nicknames that we found on tour. Who's cunt face? Oh, cunt face is my mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> and that should, that'd be enough. If that's where the story ended, that'd be enough. And the story begins with... My, my girl's sister used to live with her mum. And her mum, her mum, they had a bit of a barney and she moved out. And when the when her mum was cleaning out the bedroom and moving the bed, she found this vagina tightening spray. <laughs> which vagina I didn't, I didn't even know existed. I didn't know it existed either, but... I'm going to Google it. Vagina tightening spray. Cr- we did this earlier, this cream. So my mother-in-law decided that, oh, I wonder what this does. I wonder if it will tighten some wrinkles on my face. And oh, sprayed no. it on her face and on her chest. And... Cunt face. Surprisingly, <laughs> it worked. <laughs> so they and started then, calling it cunt face. And so then she, yeah, acquired the name cunt face. <laughs> she did it again though, didn't she? Yeah, she done it the second day and ended up with a rash. Alright, we're going to end it there then. Thank you very much for coming on Spider Lab and Grills. Um, thanks for listening to the podcast, guys, and for coming out to the tour. Uh, I'll do another little thing uh, next week's podcast. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to have a little fucking break and retreat a little bit uh, before I start getting back into videos and all that kind of shit. But uh, thanks so much to everyone who came out. Uh, thanks to Greeley. Greeley, uh, you're probably going to be doing your own tour sometime next yep. year. So, I mean, I'm going to go back to Tassie and sort some shit out with Court, depending on, <laughs> depending on if I go to jail or not. <laughs> I, like it'll be my tour will be called Out on Bail or Didn't Go to Jail. It's, either way, and it will rhyme. I'll yeah. make it into a song. Yeah, it's Sweet. like a theme song to promo the tour. So, but, and I'm one of I'm one of Greeley's references for the court. So yeah, he's gonna um, write me a letter for the judge on Friday. So hopefully, if, is that Friday gonna do that? Uh, uh, court's Friday. So before oh, is Friday. it? Is yeah. When you find out. Uh, I answer my plea, so but I'm pleading guilty. Okay, so you won't you won't find out actually on that day, but you enter your plea and then you'll probably get another date a week the later. Expert. Yeah, I'm yeah. An expert. The expert. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I'm gonna go uh, hang out with these fucking criminals. Uh, <laughs> thanks for listening, guys, and uh, I will see you next Sunday. Thanks for coming out to the tour. 
Um, I'll send an email out with girly shit uh, if if it's if it's all organized and that kind of stuff. But that won't be for like fucking months probably. Yeah, it won't be for a while. Yeah, yeah. So no stress on that. Um, and also, all of the tour merch is going to go up on sale in the next couple of weeks. The stuff that we didn't sell, I don't think there's very much, but uh, that'll be there. Um, thank you very much for listening. I will see you uh, next Sunday, and I uh, hope you guys have a fucking shit one. Much love. See ya.